Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. Join host Dan Melnick and Kasim Masood as they explore big ideas, limitless possibilities, and engage with visionaries, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders who dare to dream big, get inspired, motivated, and find practical tips for personal growth. Think big, dream bigger, and ignite your potential. All right, welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. And if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us where you live and what you do for a living. Yes, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, from Boston originally, spent a couple of years in Denver, um, but moved to Austin, Texas earlier this year. And I work remotely for uh, One Text, so I'm not here for work per se, but at the same time, I am. Um, you know, the e-commerce community, um, the fact that it's bustling so much here, I was definitely one of the primary reasons for, mo- for moving here. Um, it's also been fun to have a mild winter. And yeah, I do sales marketing partnerships at One Text, uh, where we have built text to buy for e-commerce. Awesome. So can you just tell me like a little bit more about like One Text and like, you know, just really kind of go through like the um, user experience. Like if somebody signs up for it, what does that look like? Yeah, definitely. Um, so our my founders are both from PayPal. Uh, so the the original inspiration for them to weave and start start One Text was um, they want to try and match how easy it is to shop by room number when you're at a hotel or resort. Um, so with us, you know, we kind of enable that frictionless payment experiment experience for the digital world, where instead of that room number piece, you know, it's their phone number that becomes that payment method on file. Uh, there is a first time experience where, you know, we originally are vaulting someone's card, um, but even that is, you know, super frictionless. You know, Moyes of Native Deodorant actually tweeted about us earlier in this sh- this year. And, you know, the it, the part of the experience that he chose to tweet about, like, was that original vaulting his card piece because we, we do pre-fill information based on their phone number. So it is, you know, still faster than, than the usual flow. Um, but any purchase after that, you know, you're able to just reply yes to campaigns. Um, so it's pretty, pretty nifty. But but I guess like how do you guys set yourselves apart from like it's a very competitive space. So I guess like what makes you um, unique compared to your competition? Yeah, for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, sending a text is a commodity. Like a- any any vendor can say, hey, we have a new apparel collection. Here's the link. Mm-hmm. As far as I know, we're really the only ones who have decided to build out the the second piece there. Like, hey, thanks for adding that new T-shirt to your cart. Reply yes to order now. Uh, and I guess, yeah, our CTO, uh, I would call him a 10X CTO. Like he was at PayPal for 12 years, princ- principal engineer. Um, my CEO, Jonathan, is amazing too. Uh, so I think a lot of the credit has to go go to them in terms of, you know, why hasn't the competition decided to build, a, build out something similar? Right. So I guess like as of now, like when it comes to e-com, obviously it's an e-com product, but are there certain industries that you guys work more with, like certain niches or like, what are you guys targeting even like, you know, when it comes to partnerships? Yeah. I mean, we, we really work well across all all verticals like of our top five merchants i think maybe one or two have like under five SKUs, and then the other two or three there have thousands of SKUs. um so um and then and then i personally definitely get most excited when it is somebody that has like a is selling a punishable product just because we have a, a very strong performance of shifting one-time orders into auto refills we don't call ourselves a subscription app um, but we can kind of sit on top of that brand. You know, if it's a supplement brand, we can sit on top of their recharge or whatever and drive basically incremental recurring revenue from that refills uh, feature. Um, but we work with plenty of apparel brands, et cetera, who actually some of them do have, you know, like a, a random t-shirt type subscription, um, but like subscription isn't their their main thing. But yeah, we it really works across all verticals it, as well as uh, during, during the discovery process, I often get questioned about uh, like, oh, like we have an older customer demo, like how will they react to this? Uh, but it's it's pretty crazy, honestly. One of, one of my, the favorite parts of my job is we have a Slack channel called Wins where, um, you know, we have customer service agents that monitor in our, the inbox for a lot of our merchants. And when people make orders, you know, they get their Shopify receipt and then we're also asking for feedback. And like a lot of times it's like grandmothers or, you know, clearly older people who were like, we're struggling uh, ordering on the site. And of course, like it's way easier to send a text than, you know, a lot of these funnels these days are, are for sure, you know, they work and they add, you know, to AOV, et cetera. Um, but for older people, like these new age sites can be, you know, pretty scary. So it, it's funny to see uh, those testimonials from those, from those shoppers when, you know, brands are worried about it. So when they just click on why, right. You know, like yes to buy, do you already have their credit card info or do they have to go back and click on a link to buy? Like, what does that look like? Yeah. The first time flow, but basically like after some someone's saying they want to make an order if it's uh, like our system runs like you know 
if then statement like if we have their card on file then we're going to like hey complete your link uh order here and then we'll scrape shopify clavio sendlane uh, based on their phone number to pre-fill their email and address if we have it or if they're a card on file shopper you know then that triggers the the order so it'll just say hey like just to confirm are you good to use this card ending in these four numbers mm -hmm. then click y and then then you can go ahead and buy Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. There's a 24 hour confirmation window in, in a bunch of the flows. So, you know, it's still frictionless and it's still that one text for them to, you know, initiate the order. And then most people do like choose to expedite and text back pay now, but they don't have to text back that pay now. Like that order will go through in, in 24 hours. Awesome. So what would you say like the uh, biggest challenge that you have when it comes to the business and onboarding people? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of these people are on vendors that uh, like when we report performance, we report two different numbers. One is only revenue from text to buy and another is revenue from like a one day attribution window. Um, so I think at the end of the day, like attribution is a dark art. And obviously our North Star is the text to buy revenue where, you know, no attribution is being used at all. So maybe merchants are logging into, you know, the platform that they're on today and they're seeing you know, supposedly great performance, you know, but it's, but, but it's inflated. And that, that maybe goes, you know, to the top of the mind when they're, you know, judging whether or not to, um, you know, test out a new platform. A lot of people, you know, want things under one roof, but, um, you know, I, I take the the stance that, you know, choose the best email, you know, service provider and choose the best SMS marketing provider. And we'll, we'll do our best to make sure that they sync and, and they do. Um, but I think, you know, one text will always be better at SMS than a platform that is doing, you know, multiple different uh, verticals. So uh, are most of your customers on Shopify or do you also work with companies that do custom? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, most most are Shopify today. Uh, we did recently just finish a WooCommerce uh, integration, and I'm not the most technical person, but I think the reason why our engineers picked that as the second one is because of like uh, open source, and it just makes it easier to build out that third and fourth integration. And then yeah, e-commerce e was always the first sort of arena that we wanted to play in. Um, you know, I've demoed like nightclubs and retail uh, retail establishments this year. Um, so we're, we're excited to expand at a later date. Um, but yeah, very much still focused on the e-commerce use case, but it is top of mind to expand platforms um, like maybe a Salesforce Commerce Cloud, et cetera. And then also for countries too, right now we can just support uh, US sending, but Canada should come early next year. And then you know, Europe and Australia, et cetera, after that. Just a little bit harder for us because, you know, there's a lot of regulations, of course, with texting itself. And then you add the cardinal file piece and it's just another, you know, layer of compliance stuff to to tackle before entering new markets. So if somebody goes like on the website and they book a demo, right? So from there, like how much time is it like, typically take and actually implement like do you guys have like you know you guys like on the shopify app store can somebody just sign up and get it tomorrow or does it take some time for the implementation like you know what does that look like yeah if you book a demo and i, I hope some listeners do um get to meet some new new amazing brands but honestly yeah we are we are a custom app for shopify so it just takes a couple more minutes to install uh, then if we were just natively on the app store, that can be done either async or, you know, our onboarding manager can hop on a quick call with that merchant. And then honestly, the, the longest part of the process these days is verifying a phone number. Um, a lot of roles there keep on changing. You used to be able to like send low volume. Like we used to be able to onboard a brand today. And while that phone number is waiting to get verified, like they could at least do low volume, like a ban and checkout we, we could flip on. Um, but now you have to wait those two to three days for that phone number to be verified. Um, and then we're off to the races. Um, some other part, parts that are kind of unique to us is we sync with a, a processor. Um, we operate on a bring your own processor model, you know, PayPal, Stripe, any authorized on that processor, et cetera. Um, you know, do a quick API integration with Clavio or Sendlane. But yeah, the phone number piece is really, you know, what's out of our control and um, what has to be done in order to before starting. So that you're saying is like one of the big, biggest bottlenecks that takes it, you know, like a few extra days as opposed to just like a plug and play and start right away. Yeah. Awesome. So you mentioned that, you know, maybe next year you could potentially have some other verticals outside of e-com. Like where else, you know, do you think and how could it help some other industries? Yeah, for sure. You know, one, one story that we love and, and we've met with quite a few uh, like big four sports teams uh, 
this year and it, it's a fun story like you know say um like i'm a boston celtics fan uh they have like uh two seats left to tonight's game they can send that campaign out hey danny we have two two tickets left to tonight's game or probably yes to you know walk them in i do just that and then they win you know an overtime or whatever and they they send a uh, a text the, the following morning hey hope you enjoyed that overtime you know buzzer beater win do you want a jersey so you can have it for your next game, like we're probably yes to order. So then you're stacking, you know, different what was previously, you know, separate, you know, business units, you're stacking them and you're using Cardinal file across all of those to just, you know, increase the LTV from that from that shopper, even some in, in stadium type stuff, you know, if you want to get, get super crazy. And then, you know, of course, j- you, you take that arena story, like we've met with, you know, nightclubs this year, and it's still an exciting use case for us. But with e commerce, like there's not unlimited inventory, but you know, the brand can always always buy more inventory whereas you know with a stadium like there's a certain capacity that like you can't sell more of um, but those are just some of the things that are that are top of mind so you're thinking that maybe it would be like you send it to people and then it's like yeah it can be hard right if you're like offering tickets so like the same tickets like thousands of different people at the same time as an example like how do you facilitate that right i think that could be a challenge yeah but definitely a bit more complex you know part of the reason why we're you know, focused on the e-commerce use case uh, for at least the current time being. But um, as a sports fan, it is exciting. And at the end of the day, once we get through through those hoops, if it's something, you know, it's something that the teams, you know, want and have told us that they want, um, you know, we're up for the challenge of, um, you know, molding it to that exact use case. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, like in the nightclub scenario, it's probably a easier one because they're not they're selling for example tickets to just like the general event yeah. it's not like specific seats so it's just like hey we're selling but like to your point that there is like a limitation on how many tickets so from that standpoint there's probably a similar challenge there i guess with the the nightclub they they probably make most of their money from from booze where right uh, more so unlimited inventory <laughs> right exactly exactly so what would you say like you mentioned 2024 maybe looking at you know other verticals like what are some of your other goals in the company in 2024 yeah for sure i mean we we had an amazing uh black friday this year in terms of total text to buy orders it was 2x our previous all time this year and then it was over 10 like, like previous black fridays total um text to buy orders i'm still i'm basically celebrating a one-year anniversary at one text and like the growth team is you know basically just for the most part, me. Um, so definitely looking to expand the growth team here uh, within the next couple of months. Um, we'll probably add some more engineers, et cetera. But really, it's just, you know, all, all hands on deck to make sure next Black Friday is, is 10x what, what this one was. But but it was fun. We had a little setup in my CEO's house. I'm not sure. Have you seen the the, the, so, the social network where they have like the big board? In there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we had our own version of that. But it was fun. I obviously missed my family on Thanksgiving, but I'll be home for Christmas. And, you know, part of the reason why I joined a startup is, you know, for those fun moments on the journey. That's awesome. We're um, rooting for you. But what would you say is the one biggest piece of advice that you wish you knew before you joined this company? It's a good question. <laughs> Might have to stew on it and, and get back to you before <laughs> before the end. I mean, in general, I wish I think a tip that I would share with a lot of professionals is to start like posting on, uh, you know, start building a personal brand. Like I wish I'd done that right when I got into e-commerce. I'm glad I did when I was at you know my previous um company, Live Recover, because that's how I got connected with Jonathan. Like the the role that I have now was never posted on social media and any job board site, like I would not have this role had I not chosen to start, you know, building my brand when I was at that previous company. So I think, you know, that's something where, you know, hopefully a lot of the listeners of this podcast, and I think probably many, you know, already are already working on their personal brand. Um, but if not, you know, start today. That's awesome. So if somebody I'm um, watching this wanted to reach out, do you mind sharing your um, social media handle or the uh, company website, just best way to get in contact with you? Yeah, for sure. The one text domain is just one text.com. Uh, I'm, I'm happy we got that one. And then for Twitter slash X at, at Daniel is one of those handles where like, it seems like someone got like booted off and like suspended. So I'm, I need to find a way to, uh, to buy that one. But yeah, right now my domain is underscore uh, Daniel, but the A is a V and then underscore. So not as easy as one text.com. If you want to reach out one text.com, book, book a demo. <laughs> awesome. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, appreciate it. I'm looking forward to hopefully having you uh, join us here in Austin. Sounds great. Thanks. All right. Bye. See you.